Welcome back, everyone. The mission coming up at the end of the month is a big milestone. It's the giant mock battle between all three houses. To prepare for that, we're completing the two battle quests we got this month. This one takes place on the outskirts of Garrick Mock, where we had the original mock battle back in Chapter 1. I recruited Catherine and Shamir. I won't use them, but they came with fresh weapons, seals, and battalions that I will use. We also have one new person who is joining the team, Flane. Flane appears to be a healer like Lenhart, Mercedes, or Marianne, but she doesn't get Physic or even Recover. She does get Rescue at B Faith and Fortify at A. The DLC blessed her with a Flying Magic class at level 20, and it's everything she ever dreamed of. Flying Rescue is very strong, and Flight helps her capitalize on both Fortify and her Capstone Reason spell, Excalibur. Dark Flyer patches up her speed problems, too. She starts in Priest, but also comes with the requirements for Pegasus Knight, and she has a budding talent and reason that I've already unlocked. I've made her a monk for now, since Magic Plus 2 is worth getting. This is also the debut of Mage Byleth. He'll want the 5 movement offered by Mercenary during the mission, but for these quests, he can start working on his reason and faith rings and progress toward earning Fiendish Blow by mastering Mage. Leone has become an archer for similar reasons. She'll want movement later, but wants to pursue a better mastery ability now. By earning a Professor level this month, I've unlocked the third Adjutant slot, another big boost to my training. One of those three is Lysithia, who is now a mercenary. This is a prime chance for her to earn Vantage purely through Adjutancy, without ever having to use the mercenary class. Note that she's holding a Lance. With all the sword and axe rings she'll ever need, now it's Lances that Lysithia wants, so that she can eventually promote to Dark Knight. Since I have a Thief now, I can actually get the Steel Exclusive Trade Secrets on these quests. It's a minor thing, but I appreciate the extra objective the trade secrets add to these battles. Just like in previous quest battles, there isn't a ton of XP to be had here. My efforts are focused on skill ranks and class mastery. That means instead of maximum damage, I want my units to survive as many fights as possible. The units with adjutants, Byleth, Claude, and Cyril in this case, effectively count double, so they're the most important. Ignat steals the first trade secret, the second will come in short order. Ready when you are. Like Byleth, Cyril goes to the front. After the rest of my team finishes off the closest enemies, he and Byleth are the ones who are going to take all the attacks from the ones in the second wave. Let's get to it. Ready and willing. I got this. I deliberately got Flane hurt so that Lawrence would have someone to heal here. Why, thank you. I am still. I discovered while recording this that the exact enemy behavior here depends on how badly Cyril and Byleth get damaged. I think it's interesting that the enemy units change their movement patterns when someone is particularly weak, even if that someone isn't in their immediate attack range. Trading the March Ring to Claude and then giving him a second stride lets him run all the way up to the boss's pack. If the enemy positions had been a little different because Byleth or Cyril had dodged something, I might have had to clear them out of the way first, but right now he has a completely open path. While Claude is busy up in the northeast, most of my team is going to gang up on the cluster around the nearby archer. Ignatz grabs the second trade secret. Now we don't have to worry about them for the rest of the battle. The third one drops automatically. I had Raphael go before Hilda. This way, his gauntlets wouldn't kill that mercenary, and neither would Hilda's gambit. Here we go. With the archer rattled, Flane is completely safe over here, despite the fact that she's standing right next to an enemy. I'm not hurt too bad. Cyril and Byleth continue their advance. Cyril's going to do more of the fighting, while Byleth gets opportunities to heal him over and over again. Hmm. 
Yeah. That's helpful. Violet's on death's door, so most of the enemies are threatening to attack him. If they all ganged up on him, he would die. But after Lawrence runs into the woods and heals him, Violet has enough HP that none of the enemy units read lethal damage by themselves. The AI doesn't understand mass suicide tactics, so they all choose to attack someone else instead. Even though I'm abusing it, that's a genuinely good feature of the AI in this game. If Fire Emblem enemies actually played to win in the sense of killing just one of your units, every game would be insanely frustrating. Claude is badly wounded and now completely surrounded, so we have to do something on our next turn to bail him out. Ignatz is making the most of the experience here. I do want him to get a few levels if possible, because more than most units, his stats matter for what I have planned in the upcoming mission. Leone performs another classic sandbagging maneuver, using a steel bow so that she doesn't kill. This gives someone else another chance to fight. That someone else is Raphael. When Hilda unequips her bow, she moves off the linked attack list and Flane moves in. That gives me just a few more points to help build their beautiful friendship. With the archer dead, Hilda flies west. The little barricades over here actually count as battles, just the same as the genuine enemy units, so I can break them down for extra experience of all three types. Now I've got to deal with the situation up north. Both Cyril and Claude are crippled right now, and Claude is totally isolated. The two of them can fire their bows at each other to hit the enemies in between, but someone else is going to have to help Claude out. I switched Claude off his mini bow so that he wouldn't provide a gambit boost, and therefore Ignatz's gambit would not kill. Now all the enemies around Claude are pinned. If he kills one of them, and Lawrence or Byleth run over to heal him, then he'll also be able to fight the other two on enemy phase. I send Lawrence, since I want Byleth to stay in the thick of the fighting alongside Cyril. Lawrence makes Claude equip his unforged minibow, which won't kill the boss on the counterattack. Thanks for that. Be mindful. Cyril got pretty unlucky to take so many hits while standing in the forest, but it doesn't matter since Byleth's recover spell heals him all the way back to full. Byleth himself is pretty safe in this thicket. Totally safe, in fact, since all the enemies are going to end up choosing other targets once again. I decide that I'd prefer if that one fighter ignored Leone and kept attacking Cyril. I can make that happen, because she was holding a steel bow, but she doubles with an iron bow, and enemies don't like getting doubled. So we run that back.
<laughs> Sorry. Let us away. Sword. Ready and willing. Not so sure about this. Be mindful. Ready anytime. I stand ready. Notice how close Petra is to mastering Myrmidon. That means it's about time to wrap things up, and that it's better to make the enemies focus on Claude than on Cyril. After some light demolitions work, Hilda returns to the group. The task I have now is to keep the enemies corralled and to force them to focus their attacks mainly on Claude, while also giving everyone else a few opportunities to participate. So I have to come up with a formation that restricts enemy movement and leaves only a few people as valid targets. I know that I have to bring Claude back. There's no way for me to support him way out here without leaving other units open to attack. It's your call. The first move I commit to is to put Leonie up here. I know that she's durable, especially with her personal ability active. And she blocks half the pathway between the two stands of trees, so I may be able to shelter other units behind her. Claude forms the other half of the wall. He would kill with his mini bow, except that it only has one use left, so he just breaks it before he can follow up. Lawrence can now get behind Claude to heal him. I'm checking what Byleth and Cyril can do. I'd love for Byleth to work on Reason, but he's just too strong for most of these enemies. Ready when you are. Luckily, Cyril is relatively weak. <laughs> Thanks to the Thief class's unlisted ability to ignore terrain movement penalties, Ignaz runs all the way into the forest next to Byleth and finishes off the brigand Cyril just maimed. Professor's guidance maximizes his experience reward.
If you look at the threat indicators carefully, you can see a problem. One of the brigands wants to attack Lawrence. I actually moved Flane up next to Lawrence for a split second, and you can see then that her personal ability changes their targeting priorities. Lily's poise reduces damage taken by adjacent allies by 3, and with that help, the brigand wouldn't go for Lawrence anymore. But instead I have her heal Marianne. Violet switches Cyril back to his weakest weapon before healing. Appreciated. I noticed the issue now, when Lawrence gets a kill I didn't want him to have. I'm immediately thinking about what I should do differently to avoid that. My Ready when you are. Let's get to it. I think simply moving Flane up to heal Lawrence or Leone, thereby giving Lawrence the benefit of Lily's poise, would have worked. But instead I go back and try a slightly different setup. This time, Leone is one space farther south, and she attacks the closest brigand. Stand ready. <laughs> Sorry. Who me? Thank you. Ready anytime. With Flane in the woods south of him, Lawrence is protected. Also, Claude is exposed on three faces instead of two, which could work to my benefit, except that he'd kill at least two of the melee enemies with his counterattack regardless. That's helpful. Raphael takes his turn at the Demolition Derby. I'm left with 9 other units to use against the last 3 enemies. 4 of them can heal, but the other 5 at least must use their weapons. That's effectively another puzzle. Can I squeeze in that many attacks on one last turn? Ready and willing. I'm glad that I can make Cyril do such pathetic damage. I didn't even remove strength plus 2, so I could have cut it even more. The training bow is a wondrous thing.
A lot is just praying for no crit. Too easy. I decide to allow Byleth one extra opportunity to work on reason instead of faith. I only have two other weapon users to worry about, so I can afford this. I let Marianne practice reason as well. In hindsight, there was no reason to do that, since Marianne's already in mage, and she's not going to need any more reason than she already has. But in any case, she leaves the kill to Hilda. That's a 5 turn practice session that let Petra master Myrmidon and sent several others well on their way toward mastering their first intermediate class. We've got one more. See you there.